I asked five RuneScape content creators what their best unusual money-making methods are on RuneScape. Everyone I asked will be competitors on Gilinor Games Season 4, which is coming out this May. On that show, you want to beat others just like in this one. Let's see where their methods place on the unusual money-making leaderboards. Settled suggested I take advantage of the great deal that Nulodian has on cannon parts. Nulodian can be found at the entrance of the Dwarven Mine south of Ice Mountain. If you've done the quest Dwarf Cannon, you know exactly where to find him. After the quest is complete, you're able to buy Dwarf Cannon parts from his shop. Each piece can be purchased for just over 200,000 GP. So if we buy one of each cannon piece, it would cost 802,500 GP. The thing is, the grand exchange price for a Dwarf Cannon is about 779,000 GP, so we'd actually be losing money selling it. But there is another way to purchase a cannon from Nulodian, which is way cheaper. All you have to do is make sure you don't have a cannon in your bank. Head over to Nulodian and speak to him. After a bit of dialogue, you'll have the option to ask him if he could sell you a cannon. After a bit more spacebar spamming, he'll actually offer to sell you a brand new cannon for 750k. Way cheaper than just buying each part individually from his shop. If you accept his offer, he'll give you the four cannon parts, an ammo mold, and an instruction manual. We don't care about the mold or the manual, so you can just drop those. As long as the cannons are selling for around 779k, we'd be making 19k profit per cannon we buy from Nelodian, and you can buy cannons from him very quickly. Just make sure to always note the cannon parts at a bank and bring them with you. If he sees you have a cannon in your bank, he won't sell you any. To quickly get to Nulodian, I brought a Staff of Water and Law Runes and used the Lassar Teleport on the Ancient Spellbook, which brings me to Ice Mountain, just north of Nulodian. The only other thing you will need to make this method viable for an entire hour is a fairly large amount of GP. You're spending 750k each time you buy a cannon, and you're buying 4-5 to five cannons a minute. That begins to stack up over the entire hour. I initially started off with 100 million GP on me, but eventually needed to take out an extra 50 million as I was buying the cannon so quickly. After one hour, I had purchased 157 cannons, which cost me 117,750,000 GP. But there's something I haven't told you. You'll find out what I did in just a sec. But first, check this out. Dungeon Fighter Online is one of the most popular games ever, with players from all around the world. You've probably heard of it or have even played it. I'm here to tell you that now is the perfect time to get back into it or play it for the first time. DFO is a 2D MRPG beat-em-up PC game. It's got nostalgic retro pixel graphics, classic side-scrolling action with RPG elements, the gameplay is super fast and exciting with action-packed raids and dungeons, there's extensive customization options for your character, and best of all, it's free to play, which means that everyone should try it. Even though the game has been around for nearly a decade, DFO is as vibrant and relevant as ever. An update just came out called Dusky Island, which features a challenging yet fun dungeon. New and returning players will be provided with tons of rewards and guides for them to fully experience the game alongside this update. Since it's DFO's 9th anniversary, there's plenty of additional free rewards for everyone to enjoy by clearing daily, weekly, and limited missions. The level up event from February, which helps you level up your character, is still around, and there's a bunch of special shops available with limited time and very valuable items. You'll be rewarded handsomely for completing events like the Starlight and Level Up events. Make sure to hop on now and take advantage of all of this. Use my link below to try out Dungeon Fighter Online for yourself. Use this coupon code to receive a bunch of rewards like 10 life tokens, 50 of Remy Sparkling Touch, and a funky avatar set. Thanks to DFO for sponsoring this video. Before I started the hour of buying cannon parts, I was also buying them on the Grand Exchange. I noticed that the cannon parts were selling for super cheap. These prices add up to 727 7K, and I can sell it for 779k. I bought 30 of each cannon piece at these prices, and they all successfully bought during the hour. This left me with a total of 187 cannon parts, which I swiftly turned into dwarf multi cannon sets at the Grand Exchange. As I've mentioned many times, cannon prices fluctuate between 760k all the way up to sometimes over 800k. Today, they were going for around 779k, so that's what I listed them at. Hundreds, sometimes thousands of these are sold per day, so the volume is never going to be an issue. After a a couple of hours, every single one of my dwarf multi cannons sold for a total of 144.2 million GP. In total, we spent 139.56 million GP on the cannons, so we profited 4.65 million GP in one hour. 1.3 million GP off the cannon parts we bought from the Grand Exchange, and 3.3 million GP profit off the cannons we bought from Nulodian. This combination of methods puts Settle's Dwarf Cannon Moneymaker as the second best method we've ever tested. Even without the merching part, this method would still be 3.3 million GP an hour, still good for number two. It is of course heavily reliant on the price of cannons on the Grand Exchange, but they have been steadily above 750k for a year, so there's almost always profit that's going to be made here. As with most of these methods, you'll just have to pay attention to the price.
The legendary MMORPGRS is making his first appearance on Gilinor Games this season, so I had to ask him for his unusual moneymaker. He says killing Jogers on Karamja is quite good at the moment. The Joger bones are over 2k each from a monster with 60 HP. 2k each? Wow. Wait. 2.8k each. Yeah, we are testing this. The presumed reason for Joger Bones being so expensive is because they're one of the few things that a main account can indirectly give an Iron Man account. Check this out. Joger Bones can actually be lit on fire granting 90 fire making XP. Once the bones have been burnt, they appear on the ground as burnt Joger Bones, which can be picked up by anyone, including Iron Men. Burnt Joger Bones actually give slightly more prayer XP when burying or are sacrificed at an altar. Even stranger is that you can cast Super Heat on a Joger Bone, which gives you 53 magic and 25 cooking XP. A Joger Bone is a very versatile item. For some reason, the ability to transfer a Joger Bone from a main account to an Iron Man account has been known for a long time. There's even a line on the OSR's wiki about this. Whether this is the exact reason for the price spike, I'm not 100% sure, but it definitely plays a part in it. Jogers can be found in quite a few different places around the game, but we're going to focus on the ones found on Karamja, specifically inside of the Pothole Dungeon. This dungeon is used during the Jungle Potion quest and features 23 Jogers for you to kill. There's three different ways for you to get here. Take the DKP Fairy Ring and- I hate that word, Fairy Ring, Fairy Ring, Fairy Ring. Take the DKP Fairy Ring and run west, use an Amulet of Glory, run south, grapple over the trees and run west, or teleport to the Brimhaven POH and run east. The fastest way I found to get to the dungeon was to use the Brimhaven POH teleport with my construction cave. It saved just a little bit of time. If you'd like though, there is a fourth way. You can spend 6k on a Tai Bowane teleport scroll, which will get you there the quickest, but will add up in cost. Okay, so once we're in this dungeon, we're going to set up shop by running up these stairs and killing the Jogers located on the second level of the dungeon. The reason it's so good to kill them here is because it's multi, so you're getting Joger bones faster than anywhere simply because because you can kill so many in a short amount of time, especially when you have a cannon and close to max melee gear like I do. I'm not aware of any other places in the game that have a mass amount of jokers in a multi-area like this, so in my opinion, it's the perfect place to kill them. The method is pretty simple. Kill as many jokers as you can, as fast as you can, get an inventory of joker bones, and teleport out. I use the Castle Wars bank to deposit everything, and my construction teleport to the Brimhaven house portal to get back. The nice thing about having a cannon is that if you refill it before you teleport out, there will be lots of bones for you to pick up when you get back. Jogers have some other nice drops too, like Snapdragon and Renar Seeds, as well as a decent amount of Nature Rune, surprisingly. Those were really the only things I picked up outside of Joger Bones, mainly because the bones themselves were so expensive. After one hour, I had collected 377 Joger Bones, 122 Nature Runes, 2 Renar Weeds, 2 Renar Seeds, and 1 Snapdragon Seed. In total, I made 1,239,000 GP. We do have to subtract the cost of the Cannonballs, as well as the money I spent on the Divine Super Combat Potion I used, which adds up to 316k. If we subtract that from the total, we are left with 922,000 GP after one hour of killing Jogers. Honestly, amazing. Really solid method. Okay, so soup here from the editing room. Prices of Joger Bones are currently 3.8k each, more than Dragon and Wyvern Bones, which would have made this method 1.1 million GP an hour. Absolutely absurd. I asked Skill Specs what unusual money-making method he had up his sleeve, and he screamed at me, Make Swamp Bark, I'm telling you, I'm onto something. 500 Nature Runes, Split Bark Body, and to learn, it's 5k. That easy, there is demand. Okay, let's translate this. What Skill Specs is saying is that first, we need to buy a Rune Scroll of Swamp Bark. This scroll unlocks the ability to craft Swamp Bark Armor from Split Bark Armor. Swamp Bark Armor is a mid-level magic armor which increases the duration of bind spells, making it occasionally popular for use in PvP. Depending on what piece of the armor you're making, it's going to cost a different amount of nature runes. In our case, Skill Specs wants us to make Swamp Bark Bodies. To turn a Split Bark Body into a Swamp Bark Body, you'll need the Split Bark Body and 500 nature runes. Split Bark Armor unfortunately has a buy limit of only 70, so we're limited to that amount for the entire hour. In total, 70 Split Bark Bodies cost me 2.3 million GP, and 35,000 nature runes cost me 5.44 million GP. To turn these Split Bark Bodies into Swamp Bark Bodies, we need to get to the Nature Altar. I'm just using the fairy ring. I I hate the word fairy ring. 
I can't say it. I'm just using the fairy ring code CKR to get me just south of Taibo Wanai. Then run east over to the nature altar. With a nature tiara equipped, head on in and start using your split bark bodies on the nature altar. If you have enough nature runes with you, the split bark body will turn into swamp bark. The process isn't automatic though, so you need to charge each piece one by one. Turning a full inventory of split bark bodies into swamp bark bodies takes about one minute and 30 seconds. Once an inventory is done, teleport to a bank, get more split bark bodies and repeat the process. Making all the bodies was a pretty quick process, only took about 10 minutes. All that was left to do now was to sell them on the Grand Exchange. I chucked all of them in for med price, and after 3 hours, they all sold for a total of 7.56 million GP. So, subtract the original amount, and we get... Wait. Actually, we get nothing. We lost 194,000 GP. We lost money. Wait, skill specs, that's not what we do on this series. Hold, wait, hold on. For that method, skill specs is now locked in my dungeon. Subscribe if you haven't already to set him free, or punish him. There's not many people I trust more than Solo Mission to have a good money maker up their sleeve, and it looks like that's exactly what he's got for me today. Solo says an unusual money making method that always delivers is sticking Odium and Malediction Wards together. Odium and Malediction Wards come in three parts, a shard 1, 2, and 3. These shards can be obtained from the Crazy Archaeologist, Chaos Fanatic, and Scorpia. If you manage to obtain all three shards, you can bring them to the Wilderness Volcano all the way up in level 55 Wilderness. Use a shard on the Volcanic Forge, and boom, from three shards, shards, you've crafted a full ward. Now this process can be very profitable if you manage to buy these shards on the Grand Exchange for a cheap price, which is exactly what I did. I put in offers for 20 of each Odium and Malediction shard and waited for about 2 days for the offers to go through. Unfortunately, only 15 of the Odium shard 2s bought at the price I was looking for. Now begins the scary process of turning all of these shards into wards. If you want to play it safe, you can just take 3 shards at a time to the volcano and you'll never risk anything. But that could take a while. Since I wanted to speed this up a bit, I was bringing between 15 to 21 shards with me a trip. I did see some white dots on my minimap that did give me a heart attack, but luckily they weren't PKers and I successfully managed to convert all the shards into wards. I realized about halfway through that this was going to make some serious profit, to the point where if I doubled my offer for the Odium Shard 2s that never bought, I'd still be making profit overall. So I just insta-bought the final 5 shards since I didn't feel like waiting. I quickly turned the final 15 Odium Shards into Odium Wards, and finally, after a few days of waiting, we had our 20 Malediction and Odium Wards. The Wards were going for pretty decent prices, especially the Odium Ward, which was on the rise. I made sure to put the items in for a higher price than usual, since GE Tax is going to take a chunk of our profits from this. It took 3 hours for the Odium and Malediction Wards to sell, and we were left with a total of 100,386,000 GP. In total, we spent a little less than 77 million GP, which which means that those 20 Odium and Malediction Wards profited us 23.4 million GP. The Odium Wards made us 15.2 million GP and the Malediction Wards 8.2 million GP. I can't exactly give this one a profit per hour since the buy and sell times were so varied, but there's no denying that this is one of the best unusual money making methods we've ever tested. 23.4 million GP profit. Soul Mission never fails to deliver. Eviescape has a potential banger, unusual moneymaker for me. He asked, have you ever sold raid scouts before? 10 mil per raid they go for. Now I have scouted raids in the past. Back last year, I made about 1 million GP an hour scouting them. Simply put, scouting raids is time consuming and players who want efficient raid layouts will pay others to find good raids for them. That's what I did. I scouted raid layouts for people who wanted fast and efficient raids that get you decent points. What Eviescape let me know about, however, is that there is an entire other side to this. There are people willing to pay top GP for raid layouts specifically designed for mega skill raids. Mega skill raids are used by players looking to boost a large amount of points in the least stressful way possible. If you didn't know, the more points you have at the end of a Chambers of Zarek raid, Raid, the higher chance you have of getting a purple. During a mega skill raid, hundreds of thousands of points are accumulated by players in the raid. Towards the end, most of the people in the raid will leave, which means all the points go towards usually one player. Since they now have so many points, the chance of them getting a purple is way higher than usual. There is an entire discord dedicated to this called the Scaled Raids Discord. A preferred mega skilled layout includes these five rooms. Shamans, Mystics, Thieving, Guardians, and Tightrope. If you manage to find those five rooms with nothing else on the raid, you're halfway done. Next up, check the letters at the top of the raid layout. 
If it starts with SF, you'll need to keep looking. There's a chance somebody buys it off you, but most likely not. If it says FS, you're in the money. The F stands for a farming room and the S stands for a scavenger room, which are two rooms that are ideal to have at the beginning of a mega skill raid. That's what people are looking for. Now, there was a recent change to the Chambers of Zarek that makes scouting way better. For years, if you wanted a new raid layout, you'd have to leave the raid you're in, run to the recruiting board, make a new party, run back to the raid entrance, go in and repeat. Awful. These days, all you have to do is right click on these stairs and select reload raid. And just like that, you get a new raid layout. You never have to leave the raid. There's even a bank chest in here now too. Some big quality of life improvements. I changed my left click option on the stairs to reload and got to work. Finding this exact layout could take a long time, so I decided to hop on a second account in order to hopefully find this specific layout faster. Now, it's just a waiting game. Keep reloading the raid until you find the perfect layout. 99.9% .9 of the time, you'll reload a raid that isn't what you're looking for. Sometimes it looks just like what you're looking for, but the letters at the top don't start with FS and you'll need to keep going. The more accounts you have doing this, the better, but it can still be easily done on just one account. For me, it took 40 minutes of scouting on two accounts until I found it. Perfect layout. Shamans, Mystics, Thieving, Guardians, Tightrope, and the raid that starts with FS. I'd say it took me around 4 to 500 raid reloads to find. Once I finally found the raid, I posted the layout in the Scout section of the Scaled Raids Discord and managed to find the buyer after a couple of hours. Just like that, 15 million GP in the bag. Usually these raids go for about 10 mil, but this time I was lucky enough to find someone who was willing to pay 15. From the outside, yes, this is pretty easy and fast money. Simply scout a popular raid layout and sell it to a willing buyer. Easy. That being said, there won't always necessarily be a buyer right away. Just because you scout the raid doesn't mean it will sell within minutes. There may be times when you'll have to stay online in that raid for hours until somebody says they'll buy it from you. Usually buyers have certain preferences as well. For example, most people doing mega skill raids prefer for them to be in a low population UK world as opposed to an American or Australian world. Sometimes it may not sell at all. It completely depends on the amount of demand there is that day for a mega skill layout. If you'd like more information on anything related to scouting or helping in a mega skill raid, check out the Scaled Raids Discord, which I'll link in the description below. Thanks again to Zandi and Eviescape for the help help with this pretty profitable unusual moneymaker. A big thank you to these five guys for their methods today. This is by far the most money we've ever made in an unusual money making video, and I have them to thank for it. I think this is a pretty good sign for this upcoming season of Gilinor Games. All of their channels will be linked below for you to check out. We're only a few months away from GG Season 4, so make sure you're subscribed as I've got some more videos coming out before the season to hype everything up. Speaking of Gilinor Games, the prize pool is open for contributions, and this time, there's a leaderboard. Shoot me a PM in-game if you'd like to contribute and get your name on the big screen. If you haven't watched the Gilinor Games, the link to the last season will be in the description as well. I'm excited for the upcoming season of challenges. Check out some of my other videos on screen now, and as usual, I'll see you all in the next one.